Okay, so welcome to our session for this uh, evening. Uh, we are going to look at uh, some aspect of criminal uh, law. And uh, just before we start our discussion of uh, the particular aspect of criminal law, I would like you to remember that uh, if you have forgotten basic things, right, in relation to criminal law, uh, you need to go back to it. For example, uh, criminal liability, okay? You can be asked to uh, discuss or make a presentation to uh, maybe uh, some group of people regarding uh, what amounts to criminal liability in Ghana. In other words, how may someone be held criminally liable under Ghanaian law? You have to remember the basic things we know with respect to actus reus, the prohibited act, and also the menstra, that is the, the guilty, the required guilty man. And of course, the exception to what you call like the that what you call straight liability what offenses. So these are basic. If you are forgetting them, go back to them. If you still have some difficulties, uh, you know my my number from the various platforms, we can uh, send questions or issues. And if I see them, uh, I will deal with them privately with you. Or if I need to escalate them to a general class like that, then I will do that. OK, so uh, having said that, uh, we would like to uh, discuss uh, uh, MEDA, uh, of course, MEDA and manslaughter uh, goes together. And for uh, MEDA, uh, how it may probably come up in exams. Uh, it can be an essay question or it can be a problem uh, question. Uh, and in, in terms of uh, problem scenarios or factual uh, type question, uh, you may be asked to either uh, discuss uh, uh, MEDA only. I mean, as to whether having regards to a particular given set of facts, uh, MEDA is actually uh, made out or not. Or you might be required to identify and apply the partial defenses to MEDA, uh, you know, such as you know, uh, provocation and so on or other general defenses such as self-defense, intoxication or duress in a, a missed uh, problem uh, question. Now, in terms of like the essay type question relating to murder, uh, you might be asked to do a critical evaluation of an aspect of the law of murder, maybe such as uh, causation or uh, intention, uh, as it were. Or if your examiner wants to just test your general appreciation of the law, you could ask to actually discuss whether you think that there are aspects of our law on murder uh, which are unsatisfactory and need to be uh, amended or reformed, as it were. So all those things are some of the possibilities. but. Uh, when you are answering a problem-based question on MEDA, maybe just a few uh, tips I would like to uh, share with you. Uh, you are giving a problem-based question and you need to actually uh, find out uh, whether uh, someone is guilty of MEDA. In that uh, in a regard, you need to explore uh, the following questions, or you need to seek answers with the following question to be able to answer the ultimate question as whether uh, D or the defendant or the accused person is guilty of murder or not. So uh, first, that's D, that is the person that you suspect to have committed murder. Uh, has he got actus reus? In other words, has he indulged in an act or omission which 
constitute the prohibited act of murder. And this entails questions like whether there has been unlawful death. Was the death unlawful? There, of course, you, you have to see death in the question, in the story. If you don't see death in the story, there's no point in worrying your head as whether uh, the, the offense of uh, murder may, may, may be preferred against the particular person. So certainly there will be death, but was the death unlawful? Was the death unlawful? And related to that is a question. Did D cause the death? The person that you suspect to have uh, committed the murder, is he the one who caused the death? And this entails a consideration of uh, causation in fact and also causation in law. Uh, of course, you remember causation uh, in, I, I know, in criminal law and all that. And the, the causation, in fact, the, the bad fault uh, text on the word uh, applied and so on. Uh, so bad for the acts or omission of D, the defendant or the accused person, will the unlawful death uh, actually okay? And then the causation uh, in law, uh, trying to rule out other uh, possible causes and so on. And of course, remember the issues of, you take your victim as you find him, isn't it? As you call it, the, the eggshell uh, doctrine. Uh, so therefore, if you give someone a blow, and the person uh, fell and died there and then. You don't go about and say that. But the blow that I gave is very uh, you know, minor, innocuous blow. And if I had given that as a point to any other person, it wouldn't have actually even caused the person to fall down let alone uh, resulting in his death. You know, uh, with respect to the causation uh, in law, uh, that will not avail because uh, as we know from basic criminal law jurisprudence, you take your victim as you find him. If your victim is so fragile, that is uh, what you have. It doesn't matter that uh, when you just uh, uh, put a, a piece of paper on his leg, it, it will have caused him to fall down. And for other people, it wouldn't have caused them to fall down. You don't have control over that. And again, still within the causation as per aspect of the, the actus reus, you need to find out whether there was any uh, novus actus intervenes. Was there any break in the chain of causation? Okay. Was there any development which occurred uh, so as to render the initial acts of the defendant insignificant or even uh, you know, insubstantial and uh, I mean, quite minor as far as the unlawful death was concerned and so on? They did break it. So you have to find, was there any uh, novus actus intervenes in all trying to consider the issue of the actus reus? And then uh, you must also find out the second important element of any criminal uh, offense and of course uh, murder. Does defendant have mens rea? Did defendants uh, caused the unlawful death with the prohibited guilty mind. In other words, did the defendant or accused intend to kill or cause grievous uh, uh, bodily harm uh, to the accused person? Was there intention to kill? 
So maybe we can look at the uh, this scenario. Uh, and that is consider criminal liability of uh, Garrett and Charles for murder in the following scenarios. Uh, five years ago, Garrett's wife, Sandra, was diagnosed as suffering from a terminal uh, illness. Uh, Garrett is devastated at this and becomes extremely distressed while watching his wife's health deteriorate and seeing her suffer and in pain. He decides that he should end her suffering and he kills her. Is there any murder in that case, in that scenario? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, sir. yes. yes there is. How do we go about it? Or how do we know that there is an element of murder? Yes. Um, uh, because um, we know that at least the woman has died. We know also that the death was caused by uh, harm, and that harm is unlawful because even if somebody is suffering, euthanasia is not allowed and it's not part of our law. So that that harm, whatever she did to kill her, that, that is unlawful harm. And she probably intended to kill her. So I think with, with, with that, we can say that uh, there is murder. Okay. So the, and the actus race and the ministry, I think, are both present. So uh, we have the, there is death, uh, certainly, isn't it? Uh, so was the death uh, unlawful? Yes. Yes. Yes, my lord. Yes. Uh, how is it? Or how is it unlawful? Um, my lord. Um, the 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 he decided to end her life, so he intended to kill her. And that was unlawful. Okay, and and okay, right. And of course, you know that uh, in yeah. So, uh, Mami has suggested that because there is no justification under Section uh, Thirty One of the Act uh, Twenty Nine. Hello, my lord. Hello, my lord. Yes. Yes, uh, thank you. I think um, going by the eggshell principle, take your victim as uh, you find him. In this case, you find her. Um, there is murder. Because, yes, even though maybe the woman was going to die, the action of Gareth was what actually caused the woman's death. And there was no justification for it. It was not lawful. Uh, based on the ruling in a R and Chum, where someone, a policeman was suffering from oedema and he was hit and he died. The court ruled that there was murder. So in that case, I think there was murder. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so th that is fine. But as I said, uh, I would like you to be systematic systematic in your approach. And that is to say that uh, you have to establish like the, you know, the actus reuse as we uh, indicated in the beginning. And then you need to establish the, the mens rea and all that, the, the intention to, to kill. But we come and uh, discuss, review the law uh, briefly. Now let's look at the, Okay, now let's look at the issue of the menstrua. Uh, is there a menstrua? Was there intention to kill? Yes, my lord. Yo. Uh, how do how uh, can you demonstrate it from the fact?
Yes, because uh, Gareth decided to end the suffering of the wife, and uh, by so doing, he had to kill her. Well, my my lord, um, I think the fact are suffering from a lack of other things to support murder because we only have heard of the fact that he decides that he should end her suffering and he okay okay no and he kills her there is okay so it means that if he kills her then we can see that uh, from the killing no matter whatever was used to kill her um the fact that he killed her for the purpose that she saw that she was suffering I think that that from there we can see that uh, he uh, he actually intended to 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 kill to kill her and to end her suffering. But that that was the motive. But the fact of doing something, um, which we don't know what he did. But if the um the facts are saying that he killed her, so we take it that from whatever he used to to do, so there was that intention to have done that. Okay. All right. So uh. You are right. Uh, motive is not important. The motive is not important. If you look at it, the, 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 the motive, one would say, is to help the, the suffering wife to overcome her suffering. And, and that was why, but not to really just kill her. But that is not important. But you look at uh, what uh, he did. We are told he kills her. And as one of you has rightly said, we, we are only told that he kills her. We don't have uh, enough uh, information regarding the actual means by which the death was brought about to enable us. You know, because you know we have authority who says that we can infer existence of the menstrual from the nature of uh, how the death was brought about, either the violence or whatever. But the facts only tell us that uh, uh, he decides that he should end her suffering and he kills her. So we just take it that there was that intention to to actually kill the wife. And because uh, there is no uh, justification uh, within any of the justification provided under the law, uh, from session 30 to uh, 45, we would uh, say that that was a uh, murder. But let's look at the second uh, 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 scenario. Charles has granted employee who was, uh, of course, let me, before we move on, or any time, okay, we are, we are just, uh, just speaking to these questions uh, in brief. But anytime you are answering a question in criminal law on any offense, and particularly we are dealing with murder, you must find out whether there are any defenses uh, available to the accused person, especially in murder. These uh, partial uh, defenses, as it were. Because if uh, there are partial defenses available, as you know, the the, the, the girl for murder may be downgraded to a uh, manslaughter. So you must always uh, keep that in mind. So let's look at the, the second scenario. A uh, child has granted employee uh, who was made redundant from his job, storms into his old workplace and threatens to shoot uh, staff, the staff there. Uh, Lisa, an employee, panics and jumps out of the window. Uh, she dies from the fall. Charles points a gun at Tom, a manager, and says, die, before shooting him. Tom sustains a wound to the arm and is taken to hospital, where the severity of his injuries is not recognized. He dies from severe blood loss. Is there uh, murder? Okay, let's give the yeah. Is there a murder? Oh, yes. 
Okay, so let's be systematic. Okay, so be systematic. Yes, I respond. I'm looking at the first one. I think there are two issues here. Whether Charles has caused the death of uh, Lisa and um, whether Charles has caused the death of or is guilty in murder um, with regard to uh, the death of Lisa and is guilty of murder with regard to... So you we take the first... I think you are Mike. Mike, you are Mike. Uh, Juliana. Juliana Quenu, uh, put your yes, mic. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Watch it. Okay. Uh, who is Nokia? Uh, please. Uh, who was contributing? The first thing. Okay, let me. Was it Vincent? Yes, please. Yes. Yes, okay. All right. Oh, sorry. Uh, Yeah, Vincent, you can unmute yourself. Yes, please. So I, I said that uh, in respect of the fact giving, I think that there are two issues that we may have to look out for here. Uh, the first in regard to whether or not um, Charles is guilty of murder uh, in respect of the death of Lisa. And second, whether he is guilty of murder in respect of um, Tom. Okay. And so that we take Okay. Uh, so so we take them one after the other. So we have uh, uh, two cases within one problem. Good. So let's take um, let's take the first one, uh, Lisa. Vincent, deal with the Lisa first, and then when you finish. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. So we are told that from the fact. Uh, Charles is a disgruntled uh, employer who makes... Um, okay, so he storms into his old workplace and threatens to shoot staff. Lisa, an employer, panics and jumps out of the window. Uh, she dies from the fall. So uh, the first issue is, uh, of course, we know that uh, she has died. We want to establish um, the first one, uh, actus mens rea. Um, we, if you want to establish mens rea, uh, whether she, uh, Mike Charles had the intention to to kill uh, Lisa. And... No, but but before that, have you finished with the 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 actors reviews? I wanted to take this one first. Well, well okay, let then let me start with the uh, actors reviews then. At this, because that is that if the actors reviews is not there, there's no need to go to mens rea, isn't it? That's true. Yeah. So I think the fact that he threat he threatens to shoot the staff, and then Lisa, an employee, panics and jumps out of the window. Um. Again, I am just looking at it here. Whether the threat, I don't know what type of threat it was, but whether the threat was enough to have made Lisa so apprehensive as to have jumped out of the window if that is seen as a serious threat from which um, lisa reasonably foresaw that apprehension of being shot and therefore jumped out of the window then i think that we can impute um the the uh, actus release of the lisa jumping because of the threat that had been issued to the staff to yeah, my lord. That that to 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 my lord. My lord, I want to contribute uh, here. No, oh, yeah, sorry. let uh, Vincent finish and then you come. Vincent, okay. are you down on that is reuse? 
Okay. So the actus reus, as I, I, I think, is the fact of the threat. And if the threat is seen as um, potent enough to have or reasonably made uh, Lisa jump through the, the, the window, even though it is not uh, Charles herself who threw Lisa out of the window, but it was because of the threat. And as I said, if the reasonable, we use reasonability here, if it was reasonable that um, by threatening to uh, kill her or to shoot anybody, she was apprehensive enough to have jumped out and, and killed her, uh, killed and died, then we would impute uh, uh, act, the actus race to, 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 um, to Charles. Okay. That, 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 uh, all right. Okay. So that's uh, uh, the next contributor. Do you want to speak on the artist's race? Sir, I can hear you. Do you want to speak on that contributors? Just on the artist race? Yes. With respect to uh, yes, the death of Lisa before you move on to the menstrual. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Sir, I think the artist race is. The fact that he stormed into the workplace with a gun. Hello, sir. Yes, I'm 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 listening. Sir. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. I think the artist rails is that is the artist rails. It means he, he has done something that caused Lisa to jump out. Okay. No, no. If you look at the 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 the, there must be death. Uh, what is called about unlawful harm, isn't it? Now, uh, so if you look at here, yes, no doubt okay. there there is death. So that is a uh, one important requirement in establishing that is reuse in the matter. There is death, but then is uh, the death uh, is the death uh, caused by unlawful harm? Is the death caused by uh, Charles? So the first contributor was at least uh, using the language of causation, which was good, although he didn't mention causation, but his explanation suggests that he was trying to find out uh, whether the, the death of uh, you know, Lisa was actually uh, you know, caused by the fall. And if it was caused by the fall, who made the fall come about? Is it Charles? Yes, sir. That is where the like the causation uh, yeah, comes in. Um, uh, my lord, this is uh, Joshua. Yeah, you, you I want to come there in is here. No, sorry. I want to come in here, please. All right. Yeah, I am looking at it that the art of Charles in connection with Lisa, amount to liquid crime. Because Why? of the attempt, he attempted, he threatens to shoot, but did not shoot. And if you look at the uh, elements involved in equid crime, uh, you see the attempt is there, solicitation and conspiracy. So um, it has nothing to do with uh, solicitation and conspiracy, but attempt itself. Um, as we all know, uh, is when an individual who attempts to um, to commit a crime and the crime is unsuccessful, he didn't shoot the person before he jumped. That is the angle I'm looking at but, it from. But 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 let me ask you this, Fan. If you are thinking of the inquiry uh, dimension, so that we have like an attempt to commit murder. Uh, yeah. What amounts to attempt in terms of the Senate 18 of uh, Act 29? Because it's not just enough to say you have if you are you have to read it together with Section 18 on what constitutes uh, an attempt. Because if you look at the uh, Section 18, uh, attempt is a person who attempts to commit criminal offense shall not be acquitted on the ground that the criminal offense could not be committed according to the intent, A, by reason of the imperfection or other condition of the means. 
So was there any uh, you know, imperfection here? Or by reason of the circumstances under which they are used, or by reason of the circumstances affecting the person uh, mm. against whom or the thing in respect of which the criminal offense intended to be committed. So, and be mindful of the case of the uh, Republic against uh, Daku, uh, where the accused person attempted to shoot and kill another, but the gun failed to fire. And uh, that was held to be an attempted murder, attempted murder. But in this particular case, was there actually effort to shoot? If you threaten to shoot, is it the same as you shooting and uh, shooting not being successful? You understand? No, if you try... uh, yeah. my Lord. Please, good evening. Yes, good evening. And um, in this case, there's no uh, attempt to kill because the, the intention for attempted murder is actually intention to kill. And then from the facts of the case, it is clear that the accused is not intending to kill. He's only threatening them with the gun. So in my view, there's no attempted murder because there was no direct intention to kill. Hello, my Lord. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Please, I th think uh, there's intent to kill because when he stormed, one, he was disgruntled. Two, he stormed the building. Three, he threatened to shoot. So he had the intention to shoot, but just that the intention couldn't, he couldn't realize the, the, the how to call it, he couldn't manifest. The intention couldn't manifest, as in he didn't shoot. So in that case, the intent is there, but the actus root, the actus root, uh, root wasn't formed. So the murder here, I think there is no murder. Uh, so like, for me, I would have said maybe the area of law should be uh, maybe manslaughter and maybe possible defense. So there will be a defense that will avail Charles. So why why, why manslaughter? Uh, because in this case, <clears throat> but in actual fact, there's no murder here. I don't see murder because Lisa was the one who jumped out. And if the, he had shot the manager first, then maybe we would have said that Lisa, thinking that he would have been, uh, she would have been the next person to have been killed, then fine, she could have, when she jumped out of the window, then we could have said, maybe after shooting the manager. But, but let's ask, Lisa. was there unlawful harm? Because no unlawful harm is a, a critical uh, element in the definition of so, uh, There was, yes, so there was no unlawful harm. 47. Was there unlawful harm? No. It was only, how do you call it, intent, which was formed. No no harm, no actus rim. So there was no murder here. My Lord. Yes. Um, to add to what my colleague just said, uh, to me, it will amount to a mass slaughter, uh, unlawful act mass slaughter. That is to say that the threat that um, the accused person orchestrated will amount to the unlawful act. And then realize that he acted recklessly in this case because uh, he would have foreseen that um, uh, a lot of people will panic and with, with kind of that kind of burden, harm can be caused. So to me, there was an unlawful act man slaughter because his recklessness um, resulted in the death of somebody. But there was no direct intention for us to actually construe that he has committed murder. Okay. Uh, and then somebody Hello, my Lord. Hello, my Lord. Yes. Um, yes, uh, there was no murder or there is no murder. In that um, the definition for murder, the general principle is that you must inflict physical harm on the person. Now, when you cause fear, panic, or emotion on the person, and he or she dies out of it, it is a defense. It's not murder, and that is as per, per section eight one. 
of the Act 29. So since uh, he did not touch the person physically, but he just issued a threat, and out of the threat, he died. She died. Um, in my case, there is no matter. And uh, one case to support is a uh, R versus no. Thank you. Okay, so that's. Um... Uh, what about uh, Tom? What about Tom? No, my lord. Yes, Emma. Yes, please. Uh, my lord, please. In Tom's case, I see that there was intention to kill. Um, first of all, let's deal with the actual cruelty. After storming the place, he went ahead shoot um Tom. So we can establish that indeed he the the the, the shooting of Tom uh, amounts to the physical activity and therefore that would be the actus reus. And then to establish intention, he even went ahead to tell uh, Tom to die before to say um he said die. <laughs> I think that's what he said. He said die and even went ahead to shoot him. So based on that, we can also say that he had intention to kill, which he executed. And so in his case, um, we would say there was murder if Tom had not died, but because he also did not die, he only suffered some injuries. We would then say that um, it was attempted murder. But then, oh, sorry, he dies from severe blood loss. So, sorry, I'm reading the last part. So then, yes, please, I would say that there was murder since he died. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so uh, that's my advice to you is that for you to score all the marks or to score you know, full marks, it is advisable to be systematic, okay? It's advisable to be systematic and go through the elements of uh, uh, you know, murder. And then, um, in terms of that, it's within the men's realm. And as you finish, it will be a good effort by a good candidate to also dismiss the defenses which are not applicable. They make the point that any of the known uh, partial defenses or even like the uh, general defenses are not applicable, having you no know, regard to the circumstances of this particular case. So that one will be like a, a complete uh, response. Yeah, so uh, as uh, we know, in terms of section 46, uh, MEDA is a capital offense that is to say that uh, a person who commits this is liable to suffer uh, a, a death and if you want to understand uh, what amounts to murder we know section uh, 47 already uh, to the effect that uh, a person who intentionally causes the death of another person by an unlawful harm commits murder unless the murder is reduced to manslaughter by reason of an extreme provocation or any other matter of partial excuse, as we know under section 52. So before we move on, the point to remember in terms of uh, the, the critical distinction between murder and manslaughter is that the in the case of all the elements of murder uh, are applicable to manslaughter accept the the intention uh, which is uh, negative or in some cases even uh, where the intention will be present because of the presence of what we call like the uh, partial defenses like maybe extreme provocation uh, then the the law will be that the person lost uh, self control and he or she was not in charge of uh, his own affairs. And that is why the particular act which resulted in the death was uh, actually indulging. And um, for that matter, there was the law with negative intention and uh, culpability would be downgraded to uh, manslaughter. So let us keep that in mind. 
Of course, if you look at the various textbooks, you often come across like homicide, but as you know, uh, the law itself does not use the language the uh, homicide, but it just for academic uh, uh, purposes. So when you are learning, you have to be very uh, mindful uh, of that. Okay, so in terms of uh, session 47, My Lord. we usually uh, My Lord. sit down. If yeah. you want to speak, raise up your hand. Yeah, yeah. My Lord, please, I have a question. You are Mongolese. How do you say Mongolese? Yeah, so Everybody put up know. your mic. If you want to uh, speak, just raise up your hand. Yes. The I said that it's important. In the morning. In the morning. Uh, so I don't know. 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 Okay, so if you want to speak, uh, whose hand is up? Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, you can speak now. Okay, my lord. Please. Uh, with regard to the offenses or the offense involved in, uh, with regard to a murder, uh, if my mind serves me right, um, I remember it has been murder has been repealed. Sorry, the one who kills or one who commits murder is to suffer death. So in this case, I don't know whether it is true or not, whether it has been death penalty has been repealed. So in this case. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I think we. You've learned uh, in recent times, I haven't seen the legislation myself, except what we hear in the news. So I haven't seen the legislation myself. I don't know exactly how it is worded. As to whether it is to actually say that Section 46 is uh, amended, uh, or is repealed, uh, you no, know, as it were, uh, so that it's taken from the law, or is amended by saying that a person who commits murder is liable to suffer life imprisonment or any other uh, term of imprisonment. If that is the case, then that will be the position of the law. But as I uh, indicated, uh, I have not had the privilege or the benefit of seeing a copy of the supposed uh, new bill which has been passed into law. So I cannot speak authoritatively as whether Section 46 uh, has been amended. So if anybody has a copy, uh, he can share with us uh, beyond what we just hear in the, you know in the in the in the news uh, media. Has anybody seen a copy of the legislation? The new one. If it is true that it's been okay, let me see. Uh, okay, okay, so uh, Araba, thank you. So uh, Araba indicates that uh, the legislation received a presidential assent on 2nd August and it has substituted the life imprisonment for death penalty. So what it means is that uh, Session 46, if what uh, Sarah is, Araba is telling us is uh, the true position, or rather be that a person uh, who commits murder is liable to life imprisonment, uh, as it were, if that is uh, the case. But as I indicated, the, the, the caveat or the footnote remarked by me is that I haven't cited the new legislation, which according to one of our friends here, was assented to by the president on the 2nd of August. So if anybody, oh, okay. And then say, oh, Sarah, that is very kind. You're very kind to us today. Okay, let me see, let's put it over here. Uh, I don't know if I can pin it. Uh, uh, okay, oh, good. Uh, but the rest, okay. So where is the 
Session 46 uh, of Act 29 amended. So for this Session 46 is the one which contains the, uh, what we call the, the punishment for murder. Okay. Uh, okay, so if it is uh, true that it is amended, then uh, that is the position of the law. So let's take note of that. Okay, uh, thank you. So I think that is uh, settled. Uh, hoping that yeah, Richard Richard is saying that we should look at Session 81. Yeah, what specifically do you want to say with respect to Session 81? Exception to causing an event? Yeah, what has it done? Richard? Oh, he's gone. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, we've uh, we've cleared that, but the the in exams, I think the focus is not so much on the punishment for murder, uh, which we know was death. And if it is true that the law has changed, then it is life imprisonment. What is important is for us to know how murder is recognized uh, within a set of facts. And to do that, we have to uh, distill the elements of what amounts to murder from session 47 of Act 29, as we have already quoted. And if you look at that, uh, for the offense of murder to occur, as we know uh, from our basic criminal law, that there must have been death. So if you don't see death, don't uh, think of discussing a murder because uh, the facts cannot support the offense of what of murder. And those are some of the things that it can lead to get zero over 50 for the question. So let's pay attention to some of these technicalities. And then uh, where you, you, you find that death has occurred in the story, uh, you must also see that the death was uh, by harm inflated by the accused. So the death was caused by harm, uh, inflicted by the accused, and uh, the harm was unlawful, and then uh, the accused had the intention to kill the victim. So when you are answering a question, uh, if you go uh, systematically, you will notice that uh, you'll be able to address the question meaningfully and get all the answers. So let's say the first three, uh, what you call like the, the actus uh, reus of the offense of murder. And then the fourth one, the, 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 the menstrual, as it were. Uh, we know the case of uh, Sarichi against uh, the state, which provides an illustration uh, of uh, how the, the court will actually uh, look at the order the intent to cause a uh, death and inflation of unlawful harm actually existed. Now, if you look at this uh, particular case, you, I, I hope you remember your criminal law from the second year. Uh, some workers of AGC who were carrying firewoods on a locomotive uh, train from Wasi to a village, uh, some of them uh, who were not employees jumped onto the track uh, as the train started moving. And because they wanted to have a free ride so that they don't pay. Uh, the accused was not happy with that behavior of people jumping onto the train without paying. So uh, they pushed the non-employees of the train. And unfortunately, uh, they pushed the one of them uh, who eventually died when the train was moving very fast. He fell and was run over by a falling truck, as we know. And eventually when he was uh, arrested and being tried, he denied involvement in the incident. He was nevertheless, uh, 
he was nevertheless uh, convicted for uh, murder and he sought to challenge uh, his conviction uh, right up to the uh, Supreme Court. And the court was of the view that having regard to uh, the whole set of facts, there was sufficient evidence of intention to uh, to cause death and inflation of uh, unlawful harm. And for that matter, uh, death uh, uh, had okay in the circumstances uh, of the case uh, as it were. So a train going, you push someone, okay? You push someone uh, off a fast moving train. If you look at that act itself, there's a intention uh, present because when there's a fast moving train, uh, as we always say that you must uh, know the natural consequences of what, you must be taken to intend the natural consequences of your action. A fast moving train, you push a human being onto the floor, definitely the person will die. So there's no uh, dispute uh, that uh, you intended to cause the death of the person. But uh, in terms of the unlawful harm, if we look at session uh, one, it will tell us what amounts to harm. So the harm, which was caused to the disease, the person who has died, according to session one, must have been a bodily hurt. So bodily hurt means that there must be some kind of a, a scratch or there must be some laceration or some kind of wound uh, on the body of the person. It's not just uh, uh, maybe you not touching the person or not really, I mean, hurt means hurt. There must be some kind of laceration or some wound, uh, as it were. Uh, disease or disorder whether permanent or temporary, that will suffice as a harm. And this harm must be unlawful. Uh, as we know, this harm must be unlawful. That is to say that it is a harm which is caused intentionally or neg negligently without any uh, justification as uh, stipulated by Session uh, uh, 76. Uh, and uh, Section 76 uh, will tell us that uh, a harm is said to be unlawful uh, if it is done without any of the justification uh, mentioned in Chapter 1. In Chapter 1, we are talking about uh, from, let's say, Section uh, 30 uh, right up to Section 45, uh, the various instances in which uh, permissible harm or uh, justifiable harm uh, may be committed. So if the harm in question uh, cannot come under any of those uh, justification, then that will be uh, unlawful harm. So uh, just in case uh, you have uh, forgotten, uh, you must go back to session uh, 30 of uh, Act uh, 29 uh, at you no know, what do you call a justifiable harm, uh, 31, a lot of uh, grounds have been uh, stated in which force or harm uh, is justified. Where it is done, for example, as a result of express authority given by any enactment or uh, as a result of carrying out uh, the lawful sentence uh, or order of a court or authority of an officer uh, who is supposed to keep uh, the peace or to ensure that order is preserved, place one to a uh, court order, or uh, necessity of uh, defense of property or possession, of overcoming the obstruction to the exercise of uh, lawful rights, of the consent of the person against whom the force is used. But of the consent of the person against whom the force is used, you have to uh, notice that there is a uh, uh, limitation, isn't it? For example, you cannot say that someone agreed that uh, 
you should kill him. And for that matter, uh, you have a justification. No, because our law does not support a mercy killing or euthanasia. So let us uh, keep that in mind. So if uh, the harm, as we have indicated, was caused with any of these justification, then there will be escorporation or despite the fact that death has occurred, uh, the accused person will be uh, left off the hook. We also notice that there should be intention to uh, 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 cause death. So it's not enough that you inflicted harm, which was unlawful, which resulted uh, in the death of the accused person. It must also be shown that you had the requisite intention that death should actually occur to the accused person. And here, uh, as we have uh, stated before, motive is not important. Motive means that it doesn't matter uh, why you wanted to kill the person, right? Uh, what you wanted to achieve. No, that is not important. The most important thing is that you actually uh, wanted to bring about the death of the person. And why you wanted to bring about the death of the person is really not uh, important. So let us uh, keep that in mind. So motive is not uh, important. And uh, in terms of intention, uh, when we discuss introduction to criminal liability, I want to believe that you look extensively at uh, session 11 regarding uh, what amounts to uh, intention. And one of the things that we should uh, remember is that uh, with respect to intention to cause the for purposes of the mens rea of murder, uh, if a person uh, engages uh, in an act, as uh, we, we know, the law says that you intend the ordinary uh, consequences of, of, of what you have done. And for that matter, uh, if you look at the illustration in, let's say, uh, uh, session 11.3, that a person who uh, does an act of a kind or in a manner, that if a reasonable caution on reservation are used, it will appear to that person that, A, the act will probably cause or contribute to cause an event, or B, that there will be great risk of the art causing or contributing to cause an event. Intense for purposes of this session to cause that event until it is shown that that person believed that the art will probably not cause or contribute to cause the event, or there was not an intention to cause or to contribute to it. Now, so what we are saying is that if you look at session 11.3, uh, intention here is an objective one. Objective in the sense that it is not what you had in your mind privately, which is important. But we look at the external actions, the things that you did, and then we find out whether we can say that you intended to actually uh, cause or contribute to the particular event. So in this case, uh, whether you intended to, to kill the person, to bring about the death of the person. If you look at the as that we did. So if you take the case of like the Sarich here, uh, which we uh, uh, cited uh, earlier on, which went to the Supreme Court, a moving a train which is moving at the top speed, you push uh, someone uh, off the train, okay? And certainly, we don't, we are not interested in your motive that because the person didn't want to pay uh, you know, the law fare, that is why you are, you are pushing him or her off the train. No. A train moving at a fast uh, you know, speed, you push a human being from it, Objectively, we will say that you want the person to do or to die. Because if you, if you push a human being uh, forcibly to the ground, certainly uh, the person uh, will die as it were. So the 
intention is actually determined, as I said, uh, objectively. So uh, using reasonable caution on observation, it will appear to the accused. His action will probably cause or contribute to the event, or there will be great risk of his actions causing or contributing to the cause of uh, event. As I have uh, uh, you know, cited the case of the Sirechi. In the same uh, vein, if we look at the Sine against the Republic, the point was made that an intention to kill may be inferred from the instrument or weapon used in killing or the manner in which the harm from which death is inflicted. So sometimes if you look at the, the nature of the violence or how the killing was done, we can actually read intention to cause death, to kill the person from that. And that is uh, what the Sine uh, is uh, telling us. And even uh, where a person does are not in good faith, maybe for purposes of uh, medical or surgical uh, treatment, uh, then uh, the law uh, is saying that an intent to cause death shall not be presumed from the fact that the act was or appear likely to cause death. So if you look at the section uh, 67 of the legislation, we have uh, some uh, modification with respect to uh, how, let's say that maybe uh, death, for example, would uh, occur in the course of uh, medical uh, treatment. So session uh, 67, uh, where a person does an act in good faith for the purposes of medical or surgical treatment, an intent to cause death shall not be presumed for the fact that the act was or appeared likely to have caused death. So an act which is done in good faith and without negligence for purpose of medical or surgical treatment of a pregnant woman is justifiable, although it causes or is intended to cause abortion or delivery of premature death or the death of the child, as it were. So you notice that for actions by healthcare professionals who are doing you know, medical treatment or surgery, ordinarily they qualify as harm because it's about bodily health is about uh, no disease or uh, any of the senses which as you know uh, session one says the harm is but uh, they are doing it in good faith good faith in the sense that they are doing it uh, for the good of the patient and mind you, don't tell me that because we are saying that they are doing it in good faith for the good of the patient. You go back to the question that we are discussing and say that uh, Charles was also uh, trying to end the suffering of his wife by killing him. And for that matter, uh, he is covered. No, Charles is not a doctor. In any case, a doctor is even not licensed to kill someone because the person is suffering. Our doctors for the time being are licensed to, to cure, manage, and also uh, treat a uh, patient with the hope of restoring them or ensuring that their suffering will go down until they will die naturally. So let's uh, keep that uh, in mind. And again, we also have to remember that uh, before we can say that an act or mission uh, cause death, and for that matter, a murder. The death must have occurred within a year and day of the inflation of the law for him. So remember the famous uh, uh, a year and a day rule, right? A year and a day rule. If you go to England and Wales, where you took our law from, that law has been abolished, but it is still very much part of our law that if you cause unlawful harm, and if the person died from that unlawful harm, or if or the person died within one year plus a day, that death will be attributed to 
the one who caused the unlawful harm. Now that is problematic because sometimes uh, unlawful harm may be caused and the death may be not occur within one year and a day. It may be probably uh, thereafter. If there has not been any break in the chain of causation, why shouldn't we be able to hold the person who inflicted the unlawful harm as being responsible for the death? Uh, and probably that uh, forms part of the basis for abolition of the rule of uh, a day, a year and day rule in the English uh, law on murder. But as I said, we uh, haven't actually done that yet. So let us uh, remember uh, that. So if you look at the uh, session uh, 64 uh, ye, it is uh, instructive on what I have said regarding the year and the day rule. And the famous case of uh, Aaron Dyson, uh, if you remember, uh, where the accused had inflated wounds on a man, uh, which caused his death more than a year and a day afterwards. And the court held that in absence of recent injuries, death could not have been accelerated by the act of the uh, accused. Yeah, so uh, the takeaway is that if the unlawful harm does not result in a death within one year and a day, then the accused person is exculpated, is exonerated. As I said, that is the law. I mean, whether scientifically it makes sense uh, or not, but that is the law now. So the rule in Aaron Dyson, which is uh, codified in section uh, 64 e is still very much the applicable law in Ghana, despite the fact that it has been uh, abolished in English law now. So let's keep that in mind. I think somebody has what a question. Uh, I think uh, somebody has asked a question. Okay. Uh, Valerie wanted to know that the bill has been passed. That is a bill. Do you mean the bill relating to abolition of the death penalty? I think from, uh, we can cross check that. Okay. So don't worry so much. In any case, uh, if that is going to become a subject of interest. We may probably be invited to explore the arguments for and against their penalty, right? Which is more of a jurisprudential or philosophical uh, debate uh, than just a uh, meta uh, criminal law. But we can, if you are interested in the case for and against death penalty. I mean, that is a very straightforward topic. We can probably look at it in one subsession uh, in the course of time. So don't worry about that. So let us uh, keep that uh, in mind. And of course, we have uh, noted that uh, all that we have said about uh, MEDA to large extent are applicable to uh, manslaughter. Uh, the only difference being that, as we saw in the case of murder, uh, we are dealing with the intent to kill, intention to kill. But in the case of uh, manslaughter, uh, we are dealing with the killing uh, simpliciter without any intent to do so. That is to say that, yes, uh, death has occurred, and you cause the death. But then we cannot see that you had an intention to actually uh, kill or to, if you like, bring about the death, except that the death has occurred. And we, we, we see that through you. And it is uh, caused by uh, unlawful harm, uh, as it were. So let us uh, keep that in mind. Yeah, Mr. Lankwa, yeah, I'm teaching your channel at. Uh, uh, seven, seven fifteen. Why seven fifteen? Oh, right. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Sorry.
Yeah, so uh, now that um, we are told that the death penalty is being abolished or has been abolished, then in terms of punishment for manslaughter and murder, uh, the difference may not be much because manslaughter too, uh, if you are convicted, being a first degree felony, uh, the accused person is liable to imprisonment for life, uh, you know, for life, or some other uh, lesser term. But I don't know whether in the new bill, uh, which is seeking to abolish death penalty for murder, whether it will be made life imprisonment simpliciter without any, uh, you no. Know, variation that we can have some number of years instead of life in some cases as uh, pertains to manslaughter. For manslaughter, depending upon you know, how uh, the actual facts were, the court can impose something less than uh, uh, life imprisonment as it was. Let us uh, look at that. So uh, manslaughter, uh, we could probably talk about three categories. Although, if you look at uh, Dennis's uh, work, uh, he decided to use the two uh, categories approach. So he talks about voluntary manslaughter and then involuntary manslaughter. I mean, which is fine. It's essentially the same as uh, where we also say that uh, manslaughter is of three categories. So first, uh, where murder is reduced manslaughter by extenuating circumstances or uh, excuse. So such as uh, what you call like the, uh, you have extreme provocation. Extreme provocation, uh, as you know, uh, somebody uh, is uh, probably uh, uh, you know, committing maybe adultery on your spouse in your view and you, uh, you lose your self-control or uh you no know, somebody attacks um maybe your spouse or your child you lose you know your self control and so on or uh you are uh, lactating a mother and uh you, you know as a result of what you call like the post uh, partum uh, depression you bring about the death of your baby who is less than uh, 12 months, as it were. So we also have uh, where death or homicide is caused by unlawful harm without intention uh, to kill, or caused by negligence amounting to reckless disregard for human life. So any of these will actually uh, constitute a manslaughter. So uh, we need to Remember what we said with respect to session uh, 47 uh, when we are considering a uh, murder reduced manslaughter. So, session 47, we are told that unless the murder is reduced to what manslaughter by reason of an extreme provocation or any other matter of partial excuse, as is mentioned in session what, uh, 52, that is the first uh, category of. Uh, a manslaughter, if you want to use the approaches that we are using here. So section 52 uh, is to the effect that a person who intentionally causes the death of another person by unlawful harm commits manslaughter and not of murder or attempt to murder. If that person, A, was deprived of the power of self-control by an extreme provocation, given by the other person, as is mentioned in uh, 53, 54, 55, and 56. Or B, was justified in causing harm to the other person and in causing harm in excess of the harm which that person was justified in causing, that person acted from a terror of immediate death or grievous harm that in fact deprived that in fact deprived that for the time being of the power of self uh, control. So uh, any of these uh, instances would uh, result in death, I'm uh, sorry, in murder 
being reduced to a manslaughter. Uh, so what I will uh, suggest is that you have to be familiar with the uh, the various uh, instances uh, which have become vast under session uh, 52. So uh, if we look at the case of uh, Kunto versus the Republic, uh, for example, a case which is uh, cited by uh, Professor Mensa Bonsu immediately after session uh, 52, the appellants uh, and the disease were cousins. They live in the same house. And the uh, appellant stabbed the disease who died of his wounds later. So there was evidence that the disease was the bigger and stronger of the two, as well as the aggressor. And the appellant uttered words of remorse when the incident happened. So during the trial, the judge failed to direct the jury on manslaughter as an alternative verdict, given the circumstances of the attack. And the appellant was accused of, of convicted of murder. He appealed the conviction of murder. And when he appealed, uh, it was held that the appellant was justified in using force to defend himself, even though he exceeded the limit permissible given the circumstances. And the appellate court said that the jury should have been directed by the trial court to return a verdict of manslaughter if they felt that a murder could not be uh, sustained uh, as it were. So let's uh, keep that in mind. And then uh, see, 53, uh, 52C, in causing the death, acted in the belief or in good faith and on reasonable grounds of being under legal duty to cause the death or to do the act which that person did. So if you cause death and uh, you cause death in circumstances in which you could be said to have acted in good faith and with reasonable grounds, despite the fact that uh, you have actually caused death by unlawful harms and all that, you will not be made to be found guilty of murder the, to be reduced to a manslaughter. Or as uh, we have uh, indicated, D, uh, if you are a woman, you cause the death of a child who is uh, within, uh, like a child usually, who is less than 12 months or not exceeding 12 months, uh, because you were a lactating or breastfeeding mother. It is said that we have an imbalance in your hormones and uh, what medical doctors call like the postpartum depression. And uh, that could actually uh, exonerate you from murder, but and have the murder reduced to uh, manslaughter uh, as it were. As we know in the famous case of R and Chima, uh, the accused killed her twin babies a uh, few hours after she delivered them uh, and because she considered them an abomination. She was convicted of uh, murder, but this was later uh, saturated for uh, infanticide, uh, as it were. Now, let's say a few more words about the uh, provocation. Uh, provocation, uh, session uh, 53, uh, makes it clear uh, what may amount to extreme provocation, uh, which could have murder reduced to manslaughter. And these include uh, A, an unlawful assault and battery committed on the accused person by the other person in an unlawful fight or otherwise, which of a kind, in respect of his violence or by reason of accompanying words, gestures or other circumstances of insult, or aggravation that is likely to deprive a person of ordinary character and in the circumstances in which the accused person was of the power of self-control. So uh, to actually bring yourself within this uh, partial defense of uh, uh, provocation uh, under the first limb that 
there was unlawful assault uh, on you and battery committed by the accused person, uh, accompanied by certain guests and West uh, within the context of the community in which uh, you are, uh, which could be said to have sufficiently uh, provoked you to lose your composure and self-control, leading you to engage in the act, which resulted in the death of the diseased uh, person because of your loss of what, uh, self-control. So let us remember that if someone merely speaks what may ordinarily be called provocative words, that is not enough. So mere insults will not be enough for you to say that you lost your self-control and you actually uh, you know, attack the other person resulting in his death. And I didn't intend to actually kill the person because you acted without uh, self-control. No, uh, I didn't, there must be actual uh, unlawful assault and battery accompanied by uh, those uh, gestures or uh, words, uh, which are considered uh, you know, provocative within the context of the circumstances in which the person finds himself. So that a person of ordinary character uh, will naturally lose his uh, self-control if he has been unlawfully uh, assaulted or battered ways as well. So let's keep that in mind. And you can look at the case of coding uh, subtlety against the Republic, uh, which you can read uh, later in your book. Again, uh, a person may take advantage of the partial defense of uh, provocation, which will reduce murder to manslaughter. Uh, if the person can uh, actually uh, 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 demonstrate the assumption by the other person, that is the, uh, the accused person, at the commencement of an unlawful uh, 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 fight of an attitude, Manifesting an intention of instantly attacking the accused person with deadly or dangerous means or in a deadly uh, manner. So if, uh, for example, uh, there was that uh, kind of uh, assumption that there was an unlawful uh, fight and uh, if you look at uh, the other uh, party, he had invents uh, you know, an intention to make use of you know, something which is uh, more uh, deadly or dangerous, and you need to act in order to uh, prevent that from happening. And let's say that in that effort, death okay. So you didn't actually intend to you know, kill the person, but just to thwart the uh, the, the deadly or the dangerous uh, uh, means with which uh, he uh, invents an intention to attack the yeah. other person with. And, and for that reason, uh, the death, which has occurred, which ordinarily will have been murder, will be reduced to a uh, uh, manslaughter. And again, uh, Section 53C uh, uh, makes it clear that provocation may avail an accused person and have murder reduced to manslaughter, uh, where it was as a result of an act of uh, adultery committed in the view of the accused person with or by the wife of the husband or the criminal offense of unnatural canal knowledge committed in the husband or wife's view on the wife or the husband or the child. So if uh, this act, for example, was done. That is, a spouse found uh, his spouse in the very act or her spouse in the uh, very act with another person and uh, that made him or her to lose uh, self-control and reach out for whatever uh, he or she could actually immediately uh, lay hands on and attack uh, the people in the act, unless it death occurred. 
and that will be a clear case of extreme provocation and extenuating uh, circumstance which will have the murder reduced to uh, manslaughter. So uh, uh, look at that. And look at the case of Ajiman against the, the Republic. But uh, in all this, uh, what you should remember is the time between the alleged provocation and the acts which you actually did, which resulted in the death. So therefore, if uh, you got into the act and you traveled, let's say about half mile, to go and get a gun, to come and shoot uh, the, the, the people in the act, that may not suffice as uh, extreme provocation because uh, we can say that you actually lost your self-control. You have had a significant room for premeditation and so on. So let us uh, look at that. Okay, I noticed we've uh, we've been a lot of time now, and uh, we will wind up here. But uh, you also have to remember that uh, apart from uh, murder reduced to manslaughter with regards to uh, provocation, as we have seen under Session uh, 53. If you look at the uh, Session uh, 51, you will notice that there is uh, a certain proviso, and that provides another example, another category of manslaughter. You know, 51 will say that a person who causes the death of another person by unlawful harm commits manslaughter. But if the harm causing the death is caused by negligence, that person has not committed manslaughter unless the negligence amounts to a reckless disregard of human life. So uh, manslaughter caused by uh, negligence, a reckless disregard for, what? for human life will uh, certainly uh, give rise to manslaughter. So not negligence per se, so remember, not negligence per se, which is giving rise to the manslaughter in this case, but we are talking about uh, uh, negligence, which amounts to a reckless disregard for what? For uh, human life. So let us uh, keep that in mind. Okay, so I think this is a, a good point to end. Uh, okay, so I think just before I leave, there was a question by uh, Valerie that the new bill, which uh, Araba told that whether it will be good to quote it as a legal principle during the exams. Well, as I indicated, at this stage, I am unable to confirm because having seen the, the new legislation myself, I've only heard about it in the news. So we need to do a bit of a, a, a research to find out what is really uh, happening as whether it has been passed, as we are told, in which case uh, that will be the new position of the law. Otherwise, uh, the law remains uh, unchanged. Okay, so have a very good evening.